So I'm at Pinnacle Machine Tools today. Uh, Chloe and myself are going to take a look at this vertical machining centre which is available from stock. Um, Chloe, this machine, I mean, had you heard of Pinnacle before you came here today? No, I'd never heard of Pinnacle before, but I've just had a look at all their range. And this machine is such a standardised machine, such a great machine to have a look at. And I'm surprised that I haven't heard of them before. Yeah, well, how many machines have they sold around the world? Yeah, so not hearing of them, they sell 40,000 machines across the whole, whole globe. So that, in a matter of fact, is a huge accomplishment. And for them to break into the UK, I think they'll sell quite a few more. experience on vertical machining centres, what's important? I mean, let's look at things from the ground up. Let's look at how this machine is built because it's, it's, it's no secret. It's going to be hard for them to, to challenge uh, other machine tool companies that have already got a footprint in the UK or a bigger footprint. Yeah, definitely. So there's, there's loads of machines that you see this style look like this, but the good thing about this machine is the casting at the bottom, it's, the, it's nearly the same size as the whole width of the machine. So when you're machining, when you've got all that power in the machine, it's going straight down to the centre of gravity. So you haven't got that rocking about. What about the, the, the width between the linear rails on this machine. Something that I looked at the back of that machine, the Z-axis, and I thought normally they look like they're closer together. Yeah. But so they're, they're more spread out, which means the centre of gravity is spread out. So if you've got a big um, big bit of material on there, it's, it's hunkered down to the floor, so you haven't got that axis movement. So yeah, it's a really structured machine. I suppose if the weight's at the base, that's good because all of the all of the, the power more, is going straight into straight the, yeah. into, into into the floor. All right, let's have a let's have a walk round. Um, we don't often do this with all machines on our video, but it's good to do this to be able to see um, because I think people will be quite impressed with um, how not just the front but the back and the sides of the machines yeah. look. Having been involved in installations of machines. Yeah. Chloe, what's your opinion on what we've got behind here and how it looks? So normally everyone looks at the front of the machine, but in this case we do like to look at the back of the machine because when it is going into engineering companies, you want the smallest footprint for that machine that you can have. If you've got a table of 200, 200 mil, then why are you going to have a floor, place, uh, floor space of that big of a machine? But this has got no nooks and crannies hanging out, it's all boxed in and you can just fit it straight into an engineering company. Yeah, I mean, because sometimes you do look and there is, like you said, there's accessories coming out yeah. the back and I suppose even if, if an accessory that was half a metre by half a metre it means that you, you, you have you can't use that space for anything yeah. else and it constricts. And sometimes you have the tool magazine that comes out people can knock their heads on it you have the coolant tank which comes out here if you have a spillage sometimes it might not come from the front but it will come over the back and it takes a lot for someone to have this amount of space free in their showroom. It depends how tall you are whether yeah, you're going to yeah, hit your head I'll on the tool right. changer. <laughs> Me too actually <laughs> and so would Gio. Um, yeah Gio will be fine. Uh, now having a look at the sides of the machine, now this is similar to the other side, so you've got an access here too. How important is that for a machinist and an so operator? So having a grass door for an operator I think is perfect. If you've got cutting at the back of the machine, if you've got a setup with, I don't know, a step over and you haven't got a long enough tool, that could be a huge impact to your machine and it could be a huge crash. But if you're uh, getting rid of swarf as well, obviously swarf conveyor, you could have it on either side of the machine for this mm. one. So, And that's good again for when you're putting it into your factory because if you've only got a small amount of space, sometimes it just comes on the left hand side. So if you can't have that, then that's a big thing for not having swarf management. And have you seen examples where people have had to get in these doors because they've dropped things Pumping in there? It, and and it cuts your hands to pieces and it takes half the day and that could that could you could be spending doing something else so yeah. yeah really good okay so we've had a look around the back we've had now had a look at the sides we're gonna finish up back around the front here and talk a little bit about the control that's on this machine you've got um, experience and familiarity with all controls Fanuc, Heidenheim, Siemens and probably more um, the Fanuc OI MF, good control for a VMC? Like good this? control for a VMC and also they have the option of Hardenite and Siemens. So having that option of being able to retail for every single en en engineering person. See, someone might have Hardenite and their whole crew might be tested on Hardenite. One person might just be done on Fanuc. So what's the point in having a Fanuc? Uh, machine in a high nine based industry so them have being able to have For all course. three controls is amazing um, access yeah double doors does that make a difference in your um, opinion yeah it does because you can get in normally with a full single door if you had a full single door you'd have to 
be more length that way. So having two double doors, you have to have a go-go so gadget space. on. Yeah, exactly. Unless it went like a Lamborghini, you don't yeah. know. <laughs> but also they've got a, uh, they've got a wash down. So that's great for getting in the back and no swarf, because the build-up of swarf, even in the little nooks and crannies in the back, having a nozzle is great. And what about the probe in on here? We've, we, it looks like we've got a tool setting probe, yeah. like a button here, and, and then a workpiece probe as yeah, well. Yeah, so we've got a mushroom probe in the corner, so that sets up all your tools, tool breakages. So also if that, if you have multiple setups, six, six on the go, and it's going to take 12 hours, if you know that a tool can only last three rounds, every third tool it can come and probe it without you having a look at it so having this system and the um, measurement probe on there to make sure you're getting all your depths all your circle radius is the right right radius everything like that it's, it's really do you high think spec. people sometimes overlook probing and they don't buy it yeah it? well when people are coming down with their 10 mil born 10 mil uh, m mil and have a bit of rizzler on there to set it up when you can have something like this which does it to, does it to point i don't know how 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 much they measure these days but it's 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 bob on really is bob on well surely yeah you'd want to use your, your rizzler for something else wouldn't you yeah yeah probably <laughs> i don't know so brilliant stuff uh, this pinnacle's uh, available from pinnacle machine tools this is the lv um, 116 vertical machining centers plenty of machines in their range worth taking a look at their website great insight chloe thank you very much no problem.